The S&P 500 looks like it wants to close out the trading day on a very positive note. Now, we are going to talk about these large cap earnings that we'll be reporting here any minute and whether they are positive or negative, what is likely to come in the markets. And more specifically, I do want to highlight how hedge funds are positioning, at least with the S&P 500. We'll look at the NASDAQ as well, but this video is going to be big on technical analysis or text data for the S&P as well as for AMC stock. Guys, so let's get straight into this video. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys have not already. And just a brief recap, if you guys did not watch the video that came out around 2 p.m. today, why the markets are actually up today is because of TLT and the dollar. TLT going up is good. TLT going down is bad. You've seen TLT going nothing, going doing pretty much nothing else but going down. That has been very bad for the markets. It's been a very negative thing. Whereas it's the opposite. When the dollar goes up, that is bad for the markets. When the dollar goes down, that is very good for the market. So the dollar is down about 1% today and TLT is up about 2.36%. So you are seeing bond yields coming down and you are seeing the dollar coming down, meaning that is good for businesses doing uh, business based in America, right? Uh, like a Tesla, right, based in America, but they sell cars in China, they sell cars in Europe, they take in foreign currencies, convert that back to dollars. It's good for those companies fundamentally when the dollar is low, when the dollar goes down. And you guys can see from these charts, it's no wonder why we're hitting just low after low at one point just a week ago in the S&P 500 because of the bond yields and the dollar so that is the long story simplified of what is actually happening today but the s p 500 only up about one percent today is very docile compared to what's happening with the bonds with what is happening with the dollar i would expect to see a much larger positive day but we're waiting for those Microsoft and Google earnings to come out here should be any minute and depending what happens if they go up a lot or go down a lot there's big implications for the markets and there's a lot of hedge fund positioning that at least suggests to me that these earnings could be positive and we could continue on this bear market bounce. But before we get into the technicals, before we get into the Ortex data, we do have, like I said, Microsoft, Google, Enphase, Visa, Chipotle, Spotify, Texas Instruments, Skechers, Boyd, and F5 that do report earnings here and after hours. The bigger ones besides just Google and Microsoft are going to be Visa, Chipotle, Spotify, and Enphase for their own reasons, and they will affect their own sectors. Visa obviously is a gauge of the consumer. Discover earnings were good, so I imagine Visa earnings are also going to be good. Enphase, that's going to be one of those oddballs, can affect those energy companies, especially your renewable energy uh, kind of companies. Chipotle, obviously, McDonald's, international food brands, uh, those are going to be the ones that are affected based off of that. And really, the key is. Is inflation getting worse in the food industry? You know, are restaurants facing higher costs? That's going to be key heading into Kraft Heinz earnings tomorrow in pre-market or something like a McDonald's Thursday in pre-market as well. Spotify, obviously, for the growth sector and for the subscription uh, model base. So that is that. And, 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 and really... I don't know which way these earnings are going to go in after hours, but I know we will move big in one direction or the other. There is absolutely no denying that in my mind. It will be a big down move or a big up move coming tomorrow. There is a lot riding on these earnings. Basically, the whole fundamental picture of the stock market right now, when you have bond yields going up, you have the dollar uh, basically going to the moon. There's 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 no stability there. There's there's nothing to say, hey, the Fed's not raising rates. The Fed has very low interest rates. There's no you know way in hell they're gonna raise anytime soon. That was the logic in 2020, 2021, you know, 
up until 2022, up until they started to actually raise rates. Because, you know, if, if companies aren't doing good, you know, uh, during the boom times, well, it's pretty easy to raise capital for very cheap. How do you go out of business if you can virtually get a risk-free loan when you factor in 2% inflation and say your loan would be 2%, right? It's very hard to lose money and to do bad as a business during those boom years right now is a lot different so if you see the fundamental picture deteriorate for these companies that's not going to be good if you see the fundamental picture looking very healthy for these companies that is going to be very good because as of right now the markets they're definitely not expecting the hottest earnings out of microsoft or google microsoft has announced you know that they're going to be laying off one to five percent of their staff that was months ago the expectations are pretty low same thing for google it's not really uh the best time to be in the advertisement business space right so there is low expectations heading into these companies a little bit lower expectations for google so i'm inherently a little bit more positive uh on google potentially as far as what the stock price is going to do after earnings but nonetheless guys this is going to be over 10 percent of the nasdaq that is reporting earnings here and after hours just with microsoft and google so if that doesn't state how important these earnings are well i don't know what else will because even for context here if microsoft and google go up 10 percent alone well the markets are going to go up one percent regardless at least on the nasdaq if they both drop 10 percent well the markets are going to go down one percent regardless because of their market weighting in those indexes so there is all of that let's take a look at the positioning for the s p 500 as of right now you are seeing interesting option flow for the day on the S&P 500 at about 89% positive order values. There, there is a lot of enthusiasm in the stock market right now for a continued rally to the upside. And you are looking at about 4,300 orders, totaling about $600 million. So a little bit less as far as the total dollars heading into S&P 500 options, but considering the positive order value is 89% and they're not really hedging to the downside right now by, by them, I mean the hedge funds. Well, that is a very, 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 very positive thing in my personal opinion. And over the last week, you have seen 36 and a half thousand orders in total, totaling about $5.09 billion, positive order value of 76% and if we look at the weekly option expirations you can see on the call side only about 24.9 percent of the open interest is actually on the call side about 75.1 percent of the open interest is on the put side so there's very little uh, exposure to any gain here in the stock market right so if these companies do have good earnings that's going to be massively positive for the s p 500 for these companies as well as for the nasdaq now before we dive into the technicals on the s p 500 as well as amc i do want to take a look at amc's ortex data and go over first the option activity because we are looking at five orders totaling about two hundred thousand dollars with a 32 percent positive order value so not the best day not the worst day overall and if we're looking at the live short interest of free float that's sitting at almost 19 percent the shares that are currently sold short at 96 and a half million the cost bar rate remaining very high you know for a long time now over 20 percent sitting specifically at 21.38 percent in a cost bar average at 19 and a half percent with a cost to borrow minimum at about 12 percent so the data here on amc looking pretty damn good amc stock currently up about five to five and a half percent by the time you guys see this video, obviously after hours, things can move around a lot, but it was a very positive day today for AMC. And that is really the long story short. Now, if we have positive earnings based off of the low positioning that we are seeing, you could see a pretty big rally to the upside. The last time we've seen a big rally like this was in the beginning of August, and you went as high as 430 on the S&P. You're sitting at 382. So if we got a $10 move from here, you would be at 
393 on the s p 500 but what are the main levels well the 50-day moving average is this blue line the orange line is the 100-day moving average 50-day moving average sitting at 385.24 if we can break out above that that's going to be very very positive for the stock market and i would imagine that if we have really good earnings tomorrow we could even gap up above 388.91 and put us in this range between the 100 and the 200 day moving average the 200 day moving average like you've seen over here in august is much more in important it's 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 a much bigger you know change of trend so fundamentally if you broke above the 200 day moving average that would be much more bullish now i think that is going to be the limit of this bear market rally and even if we did hit the 200 day moving average it would still put us in an overall you know downtrend it it would you know really wouldn't change anything about the downtrend you know look at this look at this downtrending line that i just put i mean if that goes right over the 200 day moving average so that would make sense for a best case scenario bear market rally if something like apple and google and amazon and microsoft have relatively good earnings and the fundamental picture can hold up that is as high as the markets will go i will go out and put my foot down on the line on that one it's not going to go higher than 408 409 and that is because of the 200 day moving average and you're not going to break above the 200 day moving average in my personal opinion until you get the fed pivot until you get the fed actually materially slowing down raising rates which could come as soon as next week it could come as soon as november 2nd but again nobody can say that for certain nobody knows for 100 percent certainty but if earnings are good today, I think it's very possible we break above 388 and remain in this range for Wednesday for tomorrow. And then if Apple earnings are good and maybe we do get that Fed pivot coming next week, well, that's where you could break out above that 200 day moving average. That's the main things that I will be watching. As far as the RSI, even after these strong last three days, you're at 56.62. So you're pretty much at that neutral level of 50. You're not really on that overbought side. You're definitely not on the oversold side. You're relatively neutral overall. And the MACD is looking pretty healthy. It's 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 looking a little bit on the overbought side. Uh but you could definitely see that thing run a whole hell of a lot more before it really became an issue. Now, if we do take a look at AMC, where we currently sit, I will have to pull up the moving averages for you guys right now and re-put them in because for whatever reason, it does not have them in right now. we'll go ahead and put those lines up the moving averages are the most important thing uh by far to um any given stock the indexes the amc those are the things that are really important i like to look at the rsi and the macd as well like we did uh just go over on the s p now i just gotta pull this up we got the macd rsi and moving averages pulled up right now so as far as what we see on the moving averages the first real big level of resistance if we got a big upside move would be about eight dollars 36 cents per share which is a pretty decent move from here that would be almost a two dollar move even from where we currently sit at six dollars 69 cents per share so that would potentially be very very positive if we got more volume coming in and you really seen a fed pivot the same thing i think that 200 day moving average will be key and i think at that point you would break out above that that would put us in between a potential range of 10 to 13 dollars per share and if you do really just get a big sell off at that point what's the worst case scenario it's probably back down to five dollars fifty cents per share dropping about a dollar 20 back to the low of 2022 so i think the the real uh, risk to reward potential here for AMC and the markets is pretty attractive here. I would be a little bit more careful on something like the indexes or just buying flat out calls on the NASDAQ or the S&P considering we have had three straight positive days. It might be better off just playing the move after uh, some of these earnings to play it a little bit safer rather than not. Now, if we look at the RSI, that's at, that is at 45.16. 
So under that neutral level of 50, indicating we're still on the oversold side and the MACD is starting to go positive. So that is again, another good sign guys so that is pretty much going to be all for this video i think we covered all of the bases that we needed to here in this video and there's a brief look at the technicals on the s p on amc the biggest thing is going to be earnings 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 keep your eyes on that as well as the fed coming on november 2nd we're either going to get that fed swivel it swivel pivot whatever you want to call it where the fed slows down the expectations for the next rate hike coming in december if that happens it could be off to the races for the broad markets guys so thank you guys for watching if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time link down below in the description of this video that is it i will see you guys in the next one